questionable financial transactions at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. The matter has again brought to the fore the imperative of Nigeria addressing its undesirable position among countries that are yet to do enough to address endemic corruption in public service. Cisco TIG's intervention today is informed by the need to ensure that this unfortunate incident at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs is used as a launch pad to sincerely begin to address the issue of corruption in our dear country. This question is because of our concern that even though the minister in question, Dr. Beta Edu, has been suspended and is being investigated, we are again as a country on the verge of losing this unique opportunity by reducing the suspected case of fraud and corruption into a media trial, grandstanding and political posturing. As you would have noticed, there have been overt and covert efforts to drag in the names of other political office holders into the matter. While this, while this is not necessarily a bad thing, it has the potential to undermine the investigation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and other anti-corruption agencies investigating this matter. A definite consequence of this is the tendency to trivialize this serious issue by making whatever the eventual outcome of the investigation to become worthless. It is for this reason that Cisco TIG today is concerned on the ongoing attempts to drag in the chief of staff to the president, right Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, into the issue. We are concerned that this could have undesired consequences, even from the perspective of those who are, who are pursuing this narrative. We have seen tenuous analysis that concluded Bajabia Mila's guilt simply because he was listed as Edu's reference on the CV used for her confirmatory screening before the Senate. Some surmise that the chief of staff was part of the transactions because he is reportedly of the same political sub-block as some people who have been insinuated to be connected with the issue. These conjectures have been made to gain ground even though those behind them are aware that they do not have the facts to back up these claims. But the most outlandish of these claims is the one that comically concluded that the chief of staff is complicit in the transactions being investigated because he forwarded the memo containing President Tinubu's approval to the suspended minister for the release of 3 billion naira for the verification of the National Social Register compiled by the former administration of President Muhammadu Buhari. We find it odd that those alluding to wrongdoing on the part of the chief of staff for forwarding the president, Mr. President's approval, sorry, are conveniently befuddling the truth, which is that it is the responsibility of that office to convey all such approvals to the receiving ministry, department, or agency. It is simply the administrative workflow that has been established over the years. To accuse the chief of staff in the manner they are going about at the moment is to say that he should not do his job, which also implies that all approvals from Mr. President will be stuck in the state house and governance will grind to a halt. Gentlemen of the press, from the foregoing, we have flagged two main concerns. The first is, is the tendency to make a mockery of the anti-corruption efforts by needlessly dragging in persons who are not connected with the fraudulent transactions being investigated whatsoever. This even has implications for the eventual outcome of any resulting trial, since charging the wrong persons could jeopardize such trials. The second is the unwitting frustration of governance when people demand impractical workflow, like insinuating that the chief of staff should not have transmitted Mr. President's approval to the suspended minister. Consequently, the Civil Society Coalition for Transparency in Governance, Cisco TIG, is urging Nigerians to resist the temptation of reducing the investigation of the humanitarian affairs and poverty alleviation into a reality show that would only serve entertainment purposes. This is a serious matter as it affects the well-being of the vulnerable and the poorest of the poor amongst us, whose welfare must on no condition be diverted for the selfish use of a few individuals. We as Nigerians must also not lend ourselves to becoming part of a lynch mob deployed for settling political scores by conducting media trials that declare people guilty, even when they have not established that they were part of the problems we are addressing. 